Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a wave-like pattern, something like this one. I've started a new document already here in Illustrator. It's 1920 by 1080. It doesn't matter how big your document is. We're going to use the pencil tool. So I'm going to select the pencil tool, double click on it and make sure that it's set to smooth. I'll click OK. The shape that we want to create is a very tight circle that goes out with a sort of tail-like end. So I'm going to draw something that is really, really awful to look at to begin with. But because I've got that smooth setting on the pencil tool, it actually ends up looking a whole lot better than it probably should. Let's go now to the smooth tool itself and I can just smooth off the beginning of this shape. So if you just drag over it, you can smooth off the shape. This is a pretty good starting point to be working with. So I'm going to select this shape. I'm going to just give it a stroke, no fill. I'm going to increase the stroke weight to something like about 11. And from this list here of variable width profiles, I'm going to check this triangular one. Now the width profile has gone on the wrong way around. It's thin at this end and thick at this end. I want it the other way around. So I'll click on stroke here and click on this icon, which just flips the profile. So now we've got our starting shape. I'm going to the layers panel. Let's just find my layers panel. I'm going to lock down this shape because I want to draw a second one. So back to the pencil tool, I'm going to draw starting at pretty much the same point as I started before. And I'm just going to make this bigger all round. Again, this is not rocket science. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look particularly good because the end result is going to look just fine. So I'm going to select over this shape and do the same thing. Another 11 point stroke. I'm going to apply this variable width profile. Again, it's going the wrong way around. So we know how to fix that. We're just going to send it back the right way. So I'm going to unlock this other shape. So I've got both shapes and they're starting at about the same point. That's perfect for me. So I'm going to select over them and we're going to make a blend out of these. So I'm going to select over both these shapes. I'm going to the blend tool. I'm going to click on the first shape and then shift click on the second. And so you should get a blend between these two shapes. At the moment, I don't have enough blended objects. You might have too many. You're just going to come over here and double click on the blend tool, set it to specified steps and set it up to three. That will give you five shapes in total the original two and three in the middle. I'm pretty happy with this shape, so I'm going to expand it. We'll go to Object, Blend, and we'll go to Expand. You want to expand your blends this way, not using the Expand Appearance option. It's really important that you expand using the Blend Expand option. Now what we have at this point is a group of objects, and each one of these is a single shape. I want a second group, so I'm going to Alt drag a duplicate away on the Mac. That would be Option drag. We want to make this into a background to go behind our wave. So to do this, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this into a compound object. Basically what we're doing is just whatever we need to do to turn this into a filled shape. And this is a method that works pretty well. Object, Compound Path, Make. You won't see anything, that's just fine. We're going to add a fill color here. So I'm going to add a color. Let's go for a sort of pink color here. The fill isn't working perfectly, but we're part of the way there. With everything still selected, we're going to Object and then Path, and we're going to choose Offset Path because what that does is it offsets the currently selected path, which is this compound object. And you can see now that it's all filled in pretty nicely. I've got a 10 pixel offset. You might want a larger or a smaller offset, just depending on how your shape is looking. I've just increased mine to 15. That's fine. I'll click OK. Now this offset path is actually two things. It's this and this. So when I drag away the top object, you can see that that's the original that I had and this is the one that is all filled in. I'm just going to toss this bit because I don't need it. But this bit is going to work perfectly with my lines. It's just that it's on top and not underneath. So we'll go to Object, Arrange and Center Back. And then we're just going to line these up with each other. 
and we'll group them. Well, we can group them by simply dropping this object into the existing group. But you can see that it's gone on top, so I'm just going to move it to the bottom. So this is the starter shape for my pattern. I'm going to select over it, and I'm just going to decrease it in size a little bit. I think it's a little bit too big. So now we're going to create the basics for our pattern. I'm going to Alt-Drag a series of copies of this shape away from the original. And I'm just going to line them up into a sort of V shape. I'm making sure that every shape covers up any gaps between the other shapes. That's really important because we don't get another chance to do that later on. So you can see that I can't see any white space within my pattern. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to Object Pattern and then Make. Here is my Pattern Options dialog. Now I'm going to turn off my artboard. So I'm going to View and then Hide Artboards. Just makes life a little bit easier. You can also zoom out. So you can zoom in and out as you make your patterns. That's just fine. I'm going to select brick by row as my pattern and I'm going to set it to a half offset. I'm going to make sure that this says maintain width and height, which means that it's unlocked at the moment. And I'm going to start decreasing these values. I'm holding the shift key as I do this because that gives me a larger movement. And I just want to bring these shapes together, these sort of groups of objects together until I have no white space at all. But I don't want to go much further than that. Let me go and set my copies to a larger value so that we can see the pattern a bit more clearly. The blue thing here is the tile edge, which we can turn on or off as we wish. We can get some control over this particular shape using the overlaps here. So if we choose a different overlap, we can get a different result. And we can also get a different result here using this option. And so I'll experiment between those options to get something that looks like this. You can see that I don't have any tails of my shape showing. Here I've got a tail showing. And here I've got tail showing. So you'll usually find if you start with that sort of upside down V shape of elements with no spaces obviously between the objects, you'll usually find that you'll be able to create a pattern that looks pretty intact. I'm really happy with this. I'll click Done. I can bring my artboards back at this stage with View and then Show Artboards. I'm going to grab all of these shapes, move them out of the way and create a rectangle that is the size of my artboard. In my case, it's 1920 by 1080, but yours can be, as I said, any size that you like. I'm going to turn off the stroke and I'm going to add as a fill my new pattern, which is here in the top part of the swatches panel. Having created this pattern, we can now go and recolor it. I'm going to recolor artwork. Now my black was black, so I'm going to click in here and add a new color. I'm going to make sure that there's a little arrow between these two colors, which means that I can recolor my black. I'm going to edit because it's a whole lot more fun that way. Now one thing I've just realized that you possibly don't have happening when you open that dialog is it probably doesn't look like mine. I'm going to click here again on recolor artwork. Yours probably looks like this. So we're going to click on advanced options. If you want your dialog to always open that way, click here on advanced recolor. So let's go back and do that. And let's go to edit. I'm going to close up this panel here. I don't need it. I'm going to brighten up my colors because right now they're really, really dark. This is what was black and this is what was pink. Now they're attached to each other, so I'm going to unlink them so I can take them in different places. That's the color I'm looking for here. Now I can make it more white by just dragging on the slider here as I have it selected. And I can make this darker by just bringing in the brightness on that color when it's selected. If I click OK, I now have two patterns. I've got the original pink one and I've got one that's sort of inverted here. All the black areas are white and all the areas that were lighter, the pink color, are now dark. So that's a simple and fun way to create a wave pattern here in Adobe Illustrator. 
Before we finish up, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at Udemy.com and you'll find a referral link for every one of those courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.